Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are continuing with a few conceptual videos on electrochemistry. Today's topic of discussion is Faradic and Non-Faradic Processes. Typical electrochemical processes are categorized into two, Faradic and Non-Faradic. What is a Faradic process? A Faradic process is something where there is a charge transfer across the electrode. In a layman language, if there is a heterogeneous reaction happening, across the electrode electrolyte interface then actual electrons are getting exchange between the electrolyte and the electrode and those processes are faradic in faradic process if we take cyclic voltagram we get characteristic peak uh, that we'll talk about in upcoming videos in non faradic process what happens there is no electron or true electronic exchange between the electrode and electrolyte rather there is a charge accumulation near the electrode surface for an example if we have one supercapacitor dipped into an electrolyte what happens the supercapacitor surface has a surface charge which attracts the oppositely charged ion which is uh, there in the electrolyte and due to this attraction near the electrode surface we have more oppositely charged ions compared to the co-ions and that actually create a local charge accumulation and this process is known as non-faradic process. Before we move on with further discussion on faradic and non-faradic, let us talk about the fundamental law of Faraday. So what the first law of Faraday uh, relating to electrochemistry states, it states that the mass of a substance deposited or liberated at an electrode surface during electrolysis is directly proportional to the quantity of electric charge passing through the cell. So in quantitative uh, equation it is expressed as small m which is mass or substance deposited or liberated from the electrode. Z is the number of moles of electrons transferred f is faraday constant and q is the quantity of electric charge passed through the cell so you can we can see from the equation m is directly proportional to q if there is more current or charge passing through the cell then there is more deposition or material liberation the second law states that the mass of different substances deposited or liberated by the same quantity of electric charge so what it is stating this Q is constant, but the, we are considering two cases and those for those two cases, it is directly proportional to the chemical equivalent weight. So again, I'm telling in this case, Q is constant, but we have different cases, different case studies wherein the equivalent weights of the materials which is being deposited are different. So in that case, mass deposition is proportional to the equivalent weight. That means m1 by m2 is equal to equivalent weight 1 by equivalent weight 2. Now coming to the characteristics of faradic and non-faradic processes. Here we have jotted down few points which will be very much important for fundamental understanding and that is why we recommend you to note down all the points we mentioned here. So the first point uh, regarding faradic process is it involves electron transfer and chemical reactions so if anybody asks what is a faradic process we can tell a chemical heterogeneous reaction is taking place on the electrode surface and thereby electronic exchange is taking place that is what is faradic process the second point is transfer of electrons across electrode interface as the reaction is progressed the electron is getting transferred across the electrode interface so interface means electrode and electrolyte junction the third point is it involves energy storage or conver conversion the fourth point is it governed by reaction rates and mass transport we'll talk about it in more detail in the upcoming videos but at this point of time we just want to tell you this faradic process ultimately what we will do what we'll do a characteristic experiment say cyclic voltammetry so if we do cyclic voltammetry we will get different signature in the peak or in the curve so if we have different mass transport kinetics different reaction rate kinetics we will get different kinds of characteristic peaks and from the peaks if we analyze the peak well we can get information about the reaction rates 
as well as mass transport so all those factors actually lead to different characteristic peaks in cyclic voltagrams and we will talk about them in more detail the next point is it contributes to electrical current in cell as we have shown cyclic voltagrams in different other videos you have seen in cyclic voltagrams for faradic processes we get a characteristic peak and that peak is nothing but excess of current which is passing through the circuit and that current is coming due to the reaction which is happening on the electrode surface the last point is redox reaction in electrochemical energy storage both the things can happen simultaneously suppose the redox reaction is taking place which is typical faradic and during the redox reaction ions are getting generated and ions are already there in the solution it also leads to accumulation of charge which is kind of non faradic but the simultaneous faradic non faradic processes are taking place so electrochemical energy storage is related to non faradic which we are coming now so the non faradic processes the typical characteristics are first point we have noted down is it involves physical processes physical processes means there is no chemical reactions taking place so in other language we have mentioned the second point is it does not involve transfer of electrons so this is the fundamental point we already talked about the third point is it does not involve significant energy storage uh, it is not a fact for all the cases but uh, we have noted down because this is one of the parameter one of the characteristics but in sometimes like for super capacitors the energy storage is uh, happening and that is also uh, a, a non faradic process the, the next point which we noted here is it is influenced by diffusion and adsorption again this is the fundamental thing we talk about it in more detail in upcoming videos but at this point we just want to tell if diffusion kinetics is different for different electrodes and electrolyte combination then the peak which we are getting in cyclic voltagram will be different or looking at the peak of cyclic voltagram for non faradic processes we can we can say about the diffusion kinetics of that particular electrolyte uh, or the components we can also talk about the adsorption uh, resist strength that means if uh, if you have a process where uh, the, the adsorption is very sluggish you will get a different uh, nature of cyclic voltagram if you have very trivial or very uh, uh, facilitated adsorption then the peak will be uh, not the peak the nature of the cyclic voltagram will be different so with, uh, with with specific examples we'll talk about them in the upcoming videos for better understanding so the next point which we noted down here is it contributes to capacitance or charging behavior we already talked about multiple times the last point is adsorption desorption and capacitive charging so those things can be inferred from non faradic cyclic voltagrams now we talk about a few electrochemical cells so electrochemical cells is something where we either give current and generate uh, some chemical reaction or we exploit some chemical reaction to gain some current so i mean both the things have different names uh, first one is a galvanic cell so wh what is happening in a gal galvanic cell it produces electricity by chemical reaction that means what we are doing we are exploiting a chemical reaction to gain certain power to gain certain electrical energy uh, like uh, here in fuel cell what is happening we are putting some chemical and gaining electricity so that is your galvanic cell uh, in cathode for galvanic cell positive and anode is negative electrode for galvanic cell cathode is positive and anode is negative we have to remember it half cells are set up in a different containers and are connected by a sol bridge or some other porous plug connection so this is what typical galvanic cell representation uh, for example few examples of galvanic cells are batteries why batteries are galvanic cell because we exploit some chemical energy and generate electrical power and that electrical power we use for certain application again fuel cells we already talked about now coming to electrolytic cell this is the opposite of galvanic cell what we do here is we supply electricity from external source and we carry out some chemical reaction 
so in this case anode will be the positive and cathode is a negative electrode uh, for uh, point three is electrodes are kept in the same container in electrolytic solution uh, unlike galvanic cell where we had porous plug connection or solid rich connection and two half cells for a, a few examples of electrolytic cells are electro refining cells electroplating cells we have seen there are multiple examples of electroplating like on a certain metal we want to coat something so for that what we do we take a salt of that particular metal which needs to be coated and then we supply electricity from external sources and that carry out the electroplating process now we talk about pathway of a general faradic electrode reaction so there are multiple resistances which are coming in series during the process. We'll briefly talk about what are the sluggishness, what are the resistances uh, there during a typical faradic process. So what is happening in a faradic process? We have kept one electrode and the electrode is dipped inside an electrolyte, electrolyte. Now at the very junction of electrode and electrolyte, we call it interface. And there is a certain range where some kind of resistances are coming in and that actually determine the process and away from the elector where there is no influence of the elector we can call it a bulk solution. Now pictorial, uh, pictorially we want to represent say we have a O bulk solution the reaction is O plus Ne giving you R. So this is the typical redox reaction. So initially what is happening, suppose you have kept certain O inside your bulk solution and that will undergo reaction on the electrode surface to give you R bulk. So how it will take place? So in order to carry out the reaction, because the reaction has to be carried out, reaction has to be carried out on the electrode surface. So if your bulk material, if, if O bulk is away from the electrode, it has to transport to the electrode before the reaction takes place. So when uh, this O bulk goes nearer to the electrode, it can carry out those things. In some of the cases, uh, from the O bulk uh, through some mass transfer resistances, it goes near to the electrode in this region and then it may carry out certain chemical reaction which is happening in the electrolyte. Um, uh, we have to mind here this reaction does not take place always and if it is taking place this is the reaction which is taking place in the bulk solution not on the electrode surface so after uh, this chemical reaction it forms certain o dash it could be a radical or something else depending on a specific process or sometimes this particular chemical reaction is not even involved after that when it forms the radical or a component which will carry out another heterogeneous reaction on the electrode surface, it has to adsorb on the electrode surface. So there might be an adsorption resistance. That means you want to carry out the reaction on the electrode surface. In order to do so, it has to come very close to the electrode surface or physically it has to, it has to adsorb on the electrode surface and based on the properties of the electrode and the electrolyte there might be adsorption resistances so once the adsorption takes place then it 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 becomes eligible to exchange electron like for this case o dash which is adsorbed it can donate electron to the electrode and it can actually form this r dash and again this r dash when it is forming it is already adsorbed it has to dissolve from the electrode and uh, it has to be free and then there might be another chemical reaction to form R surface and through the mass transport it goes to the bulk solution and this process kept on going and if the process is reversible then again from the arc bulk from the reverse uh, cycle it can form O, uh, o dash and then it can actually uh, lead to O bulk in the bulk solution so this will be the reverse one for the reverse one again arc bulk has to undergo mass transfer to form R surface from R surface maybe there will be some chemical reaction involved giving to R dash R dash has to again adsorb on the surface 
and this R dash adsorbed uh, material has to exchange electron with the electro electrode and forming O dash and ultimately O dash has to be again dissolved from the electrode to form free O dash and again if there is a chemical reaction involved it forms O surface and by mass transfer it goes to the bulk solution so this is the entire process so what now what, which one is the faradic process this particular process is faradic which is taking on the electrode surface you can say this is the electron which is getting exchange through the i mean from the electrode and the adsorbed component so that process is faradic and during this process we gain a high current and that leads to a peak in typical uh, faradic cyclic voltagram we'll talk more about them in upcoming videos now let us talk something about an ideal polarized electrode so this is about non faradic process so what happens suppose you have a electrode which is positively charged and this positively charged electrode if uh, attracts negative negatively charged ion near to the electrode and there is no bulk resistance so uh, ions are free to come sitting on the electrode surface based on the charge on the electrode surface and that forms a uh, ideal capacitive solution our ideal cap electrolytic capacitor that, that is called ideal polarized capacitor or ideal polarized electrode but in uh, in reality the situation is little bit different if you dip a charge electrode inside an electrolyte what happens nearer to the electrode the oppositely charged ion comes and forms a layer which is called inner Hel helmholtz plane or inner helmholtz layer so you can see uh, what is happening here these charges are basically oppositely charged ions and it actually uh, what it does basically you can see uh, this is the negatively charged electrode and this is the water molecule and those ions are solvated ions so let us understand those uh, solvated ions uh, what, are, what are they suppose we have a positively charged component that means in electrolyte suppose you have sodium chloride so sodium chloride will give you sodium plus ion and chloride minus ion similarly some other salt will give some plus ion some minus ion so this plus is equivalent to the sodium plus which i have uh, given as an example and this minus is an example of cl minus ion now this plus and minus has a high charge potential that's why they can be solvated. Solvated means water molecules can be surrounding the charge ion. So plus, you can see plus charge, water molecules are forming an envelope on top uh, surrounding the positively charged ion. Similarly, surrounding the negatively charged ion, it forms a solvated or hydrated anion. So those solvated hydrated cations or anions are roaming around. Uh, in the bulk solution and due to the presence of this negatively charged ion this as it is negative the positive solvated one will try to come closer to the electrode but uh, and this forms a strand layer what is strand layer this layer is basically fixed so those three ions which we are representing here they cannot move so they uh, due to the presence of the negatively charged electrode those three ions are fixed on the surface and it forms an immobile surface and as the water molecule has lesser size few of the water molecules can come very close to the electrode surface which forms the inner helmholtz plane actually in the inner helmholtz plane we have few water molecules and then we have the immobile layer and then there is a layer which is called diffuse layer why it is called diffuse layer because uh, in this uh, layer the ions are free to move Although there are certain attraction towards the electrode, but they are not totally immobile. Uh, like these things are totally immobile, they cannot even move. But here ions can move, but they have a preferential attraction towards the electrode. Like um, more positive ions will be there because the electrode is negative. So ultimately by this charge distribution or redistribution near the electrode surface, there are more positive ions or accumulation of more positive ions and away from the electrode there is less positive ions and that forms a distribution of ions which is given by this 
red line you can see this is the distribution of ion and it forms a potential which is generally known as zeta potential now why this potential is getting generated so ultimate cause is the electrode charge if the electrode does not have any charge no such phenomenon would have taken place but as the electrode has charge the phenomenon is taking place so somehow the charge of the electrode has to be connected with the zeta potential which is being generated near the electrode and this connection is given by this particular formula that is sigma s which is the charge potential of the electrode surface is equal to sigma i plus sigma d where sigma i is the potential in the inner Helmholtz plane and sigma d is the potential in the diffuse plane. So this is what is called typical electrical double layer. We'll talk more about this in upcoming videos. Now finally we would like to give example of uh, how CV looks like for Faradic and non-Faradic processes. So for Faradic process we get typical peaks like this. So these peaks are coming when the electronic exchange are taking place uh, on the electrode surface which we have depicted in uh, previous slides. And for non-Faradic processes based on the uh, resistivity of the adsorption, mass transfer because all those processes incur some resistivity so uh, and the accumulation of charge creates a capacitance. So for non-faradic processes there could be combina different combinations of capacitances and resistors and based on that we can expect different kind of uh, uh, CV patterns and again uh, we'll be talking about individual characteristics of cyclic voltagrams for non faradic processes in upcoming videos but in this video we tried to explain the very fundamental processes of uh, uh, non faradic and faradic and i hope this will give better understanding and your concept will be more clear so we'll come up with uh, such videos uh,